Now I come to the 10 minute rule bill. Gareth Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I beg to move that leave be given to bring in a bill to require local authorities to adopt public amenities in certain circumstances where specified minimum standards are met and for connected purposes. People living in Harrowview West, in my constituency, have faced a huge increase in their service charges since they purchased their properties. Built by Persimmon on part of the old Kodak site and neighbouring the beautiful Headstone Manor Park, the start of the River Crane and home to the only moated manor house in London, now Harrow Museum, and with very good transport links, Harrowview West should be a great investment for the many young families who have moved into homes on that development. Many residents, however, have been left very frustrated by rising service charges, their powerlessness and inability to secure clear and transparent information about those services, service charges, and other dreadful customer service. The Simon Homes and their management company, RMG, are as a result the source of considerable dissatisfaction among the residents for their more than doubling of the service charge since the residents took ownership of their properties. Not surprisingly, the residents now want Harrow Council to take over the ownership of the public spaces on the development, the roads and the estate park, the maintenance costs of which are being forced onto their services charges. The residents note that others not living on their estate can access and enjoy the public spaces on the development for free while they are being charged. Anyone can use the roads in the development to park, to access Headstone Manor or the surrounding roads. Despite the extra cost for the upkeep of these public spaces, they point out that residents still have to pay their council tax on top of the rising service charges. I am concerned that other developments being planned in Harrow or built now will see residents facing the same problems if new rules are not brought in urgently. As the law stands at the moment, the decision as to who is responsible for the public spaces in big new developments is resolved at the planning stage. Councils all too often, and for under understandable reasons after 14 years of funding cutbacks, are wary about taking on responsibility for new public space. So their negotiations with developers about how maintenance costs for any new roads, parks or playgrounds are funded often end with cash-strapped local authorities wanting these costs to be paid for firstly by the developer and then ultimately by the residents of these new developments. This form of leasehold has been labelled fleecehold because it leads to higher costs for those living in newly built homes compared to those faced by those who buy an older home on roads uh, the local authorities are already responsible for. The Competition and Markets Authority have looked at this issue in detail during its market study into house building and have made clear that they think councils should have a legal duty to adopt the public spaces in new developments such as Harrowview West, the roads, pavements, play areas and open spaces. Crucially they think too that developers should have clearly set out responsibility to meet high standards for those public spaces before they are handed over. I understand why, after years of austerity, local councils want to avoid ownership of new estates and the responsibility for new public open spaces. Too often they simply don't have the money to feel able to do the right thing. But that isn't fair on those living in newly built estates who move in with great hopes, often with promises too of low service charges, only to suddenly see rising service charges which too often they have zero control over in practice. They have to deal with often unaccountable estate management companies and yet still have to pay often rising amounts of council tax. Like I expect every member in this House, many leaseholders in my constituency find themselves stuck facing unjustified administration fees, charges and ever rising ground rents. Leaseholders find themselves dependent on developers, freeholders and their managing agent to take action, which quite often takes far longer than it should, particularly given those rocketing service charges. At Trident Point in my constituency, residents were subject to regular and extended periods of lift outages. One constituent in the building is a wheelchair user. For him, lift, out, lift outages meant he was confined to his flat, deeply concerned about what would happen in any emergency. Leaseholders then were initially told by Metropolitan Thames Valley Housing that residents would have to cover the costs of the lift refurbishment, which caused a significant amount of stress and worry. 
Eventually, the Housing Association accepted that the lifts were still under warranty, so no costs were passed on. The lifts were eventually refurbished and completed earlier this year. It took far too long to sort out, but we got there. And I do thank Harrow Law Centre, who supported residents on this issue at the time as well. Another example in my constituency. This time, Kinley, Folkhard and Hayward were the developers, where leaseholder residents waited over three years for action to be taken by the managing agent, despite, again, rocketing services charges. Another developer, Jasper Development, have caused difficulties for other constituents too. Their managing agent keeps changing, service charges keep going up, and still no resolution of residents' concerns. This is also not the first time I have seen leaseholders finding themselves financially responsible for the, for the upkeep of what one would reasonably assume are public parks and public amenities. In my constituency, Fairview have built another development which includes a playground bordering the main road. It's managed by a management company on behalf of the freeholder. Residents are worried that there's no fencing between the playground and the road. Some have witnessed children going into the road to retrieve footballs. It would seem sensible that all options should be considered to keep children safe in that playground. Some signage, fencing, etc. But residents have been told it's not the local council that should undertake this work and that it is leaseholders who would have to foot the bill through their service charges. That playground is not just inevitably for the children of residents, it's rightly for all children to enjoy. But surely that playground should be adopted by the local council. I recognise that there has been some progress since the Law Commission published, published its three reports in July 2020 on leasehold reform. The Leasehold Reform Ground Rate Act of 2022 which only applied to new lease, lease agreements, was a step in the right direction. But it does still leave my constituents stuck in unfair leasehold arrangements. The Leasehold and reform, re Freehold Reform Bill, currently making its way through Parliament, is very limited in its scope. So whilst I welcome that bill, it does not go far enough. It does not ban leasehold, nor does it enact the recommendations of the Law Co Commission in full. And crucially, it does not tackle the problems my constituents have faced with unadopted roads and public facilities. On this side of the House, we have been clear that a future Labour government would make common hold the default tenure for all new properties. Indeed, as my front bench colleagues have made clear, we support enacting the Law Commission's recommendations on enfranchisement, common hold and right to manage in full. But in addition, my bill would deliver the recommendations from the Competition and Markets Authority that where specified standards have been met in regards to public spaces, councils would then be mandated to adopt those public spaces. I think it's time, Mr Deputy Speaker, for ministers to come off the fence and implement those recommendations for the benefits of my constituents on the old Kodak site and all those who are currently locked into this fleecehold model of housing. And I commend this bill to the House. Yeah. Questions that the Honourable Gentleman has leave to bring in his bill. As many of that opinion say aye. Contrary, no. Eyes have it. Who will prepare and bring in the bill? Bill Esterson, Yvonne Favarg, Sir Stephen Timms, Matt Roder, Anna McMorrin, Dame Diana Johnson, Clive Efford, Ruth Cadbury, Matt Weston, Ms Tanranjit Singh Desai, Andy Slaughter and myself. Gareth Thomas. <laughs> Public Amenities Adoption by Local Authorities Bill. Second reading, what day? Friday the 21st of June. Sir. Friday the 21st of June.